Hey man, thank you for sending in your video. I really appreciate it. I think you did a great job with your video and it's a great question. So, let's look at your footage. We see when you sit down onto your heels, there's no movement in your lower legs. Let's look at this again. Your lower legs and even in your upper legs, there's nothing happening. You just come down onto your heels. So if you look at this, this is my printer, there's a hinge joint. So Dr. Moshe Feldenkrais is talking about self-image. The image we have about ourselves, the image we think our body is working. So we might think the knees work like a hinge joint. So it's up and down. You flex and you extend. Just like a, a printer. And this is some kind of image we can have, some kind of idea we can have about ourselves. And that's uh, how it looks like. You, you look at your knees and how your knees are working. And that's very common. I think many people think like this. And this is something we can work with. This is something we can change. This is something we can improve. Just look at your movement again in fast forward. It's really like, it's the same like my printer. But now, the knee joint, it's not a hinge joint, it's much more complicated. But then, of course, it can also do a lot more than a hinge joint. Let's have a look in this uh, little skeleton, how the knee actually looks like. You can see below the knee, you have two bones in your lower leg, the tibia and the fibula. So it's not just one bone in the upper leg and one bone in the lower leg, but it's really two bones. And the knee is quite a complicated structure. You can see, if you, if you move in, there's many little things, many little details we, we can look at. But the main thing is that there's two bones in your knees, in, in your lower legs. And these two bones can rotate. Very much like your lower arms can rotate. If you look at your own lower arm, there's also two bones inside of your lower arm. The radius and the ulna. And this is why you can twist your lower arm. You can have your palm face the ceiling or you can have your palm face the floor. So you can really turn your lower arm around. And that's what your elbow joint is able to do. And this is the same for your knee joint. The knee joint has one bone in the upper leg and two bones in the lower leg. And that's why you can rotate your lower leg actually. If you look at this video footage from a Japanese movie, this guy is snuggling his feet very much under his pelvis. His lower legs are, are completely rotated and it's only the heels which are on the outside and the toes are in the inside. This really, he put his, his feet in a completely different way. He, he rotates his lower leg underneath his body. Lots of rotation. So if we look at your footage, you're not yet doing it because you have a different concept, but you should rotate your lower legs and we will, I will guide you through it and you will be able to do it and it will be very easy and you will be doing very well. Now there's a second thing I want to look at which is how far your knees are apart from each other. Right now your knees are very close to each other and this is a difficult stance to, for training or for practicing this position. You could have them more far apart and that's really no problem. There is no social rule or no stance rule for how far you can have your knees apart. If you look at this movie, it's more elegant if you have the knees close to each other. It, it has more style in a way. But you can also have them far apart. That's more manly. It's a very manly style to have the knees far apart to be sitting like this. See, even the great Miyamoto Musashi, he has his knees quite far apart from each other. So that's completely okay. And he also snuggled his feet underneath his pelvis. So I gave you a couple of ideas, a couple of essential ideas of how to use your knees in order to be able to sit on the heels. Now, it's very easy to get ideas with the brain. But how to get it into the body? The body needs a different kind of language. At how to transfer the mental into the physical. And for this we need movement. So we don't use stretching or exercise, but we use movement sequences 
to transfer our knowledge into the body and the body needs a little bit more time so you have to practice a bit I guess maybe 15 minutes for a couple of days in a row give it some time, couple of weeks and then you should be able to do it you should be fine with, with this Japanese sitting so I give you some ideas with which you can play one is you have to come into a kneeling position like this yeah you can come up and see that you can come up straight and then get your toes to standing and just grab your heel doesn't matter left or right heel just grab your heel maybe it's tense here so you have to come back or you try to extend it's like in snowboarding yeah <laughs> and then when you have your heel so this is a center position just bring the heel a little bit towards the outside and then bring it back again the heel towards the outside and then back again and do this a couple of times so you can grab the heel here really at the heel and just help it move so you use your hand to feel because maybe there's not so much feeling in the leg but you have a good feeling in your fingers and your fingertips in your arm and you can guide your foot you can guide your foot to, with your with your hand yes and you roll over your toes so once you're more on the big toe then you're more towards the small toe and you come back and don't do it too fast just respect your body and give your body time to adjust to this movement or you can use you can use your hand for the lower leg just to feel that there's a rotation in these two bones so that's not a stretching it's not a forcing so you just you use your hand to feel and to help the lower leg rotate outwards and then you can also help it to rotate inwards inwards see that's quite a rotation maybe you can go further than I can depends on your genetics yeah you go to the inside and to the middle to the inside and to the middle and that's just something you play with and you go to the outside and to the inside to the outside and to the inside and you can feel see here's a tendon Achilles tendon inside that's like a big string a tendon and then there's muscles there's here's one muscles gastrocnemius and here's a muscle and down here is a soleus is another muscle there's one, two, three different muscles. They all can move. Then do the same thing with your toes long on the floor. You can roll your foot to the inside. You can feel now it's more on the heel and try to bring the instep, the instep of your foot also on the floor and you roll, the, you roll your lower leg inside and outside. Yeah. So that's the second thing you can do. The first one is standing, the second is flat. Then the third thing you can do is work your knees with the knees closer together or with the knees further apart. Yeah? You can see how it is it when the, when the foot is closer to the other foot or when the foot is more to the outside. Yeah? Can you see that? Different positions. There's thing, things you can play with. You can do it very slow, super, super, super slow, 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 or you can do it fast. Fast is more dangerous because with fast you can break something. So it's slow. Yeah. Just these are things you can play with. Yeah, and then you do the same thing on the other side. Go here. And you take your time to do this. You can do it in the morning or the afternoon, whenever you find time, like 10, 15 minutes to play, to move, to feel, feel into your body. See what's there. There's, there's muscles and tendons and there's nerves and blood vessels and whole range of uh, sensors and a lot of stuff built in, which makes you able to feel your leg. So see on the other side and with the foot flat, so these are things you can do. This is this. You can do with both together. Yeah. So you have to arch a little bit. Another thing I show you which you can do. So for this movement you might need a cushion or I have a roller. You don't necessarily need one. 
it works like this. You come onto the floor, onto your belly, like this. I put the microphone here. Yeah. And then you try to catch your foot with the hand on the same side. So left foot, left hand. Just try to catch it. If you cannot catch it, you can catch it at the sock. You can catch the foot and just pull it a little bit closer, a little bit further away. It's not a, not a stretch, it's not stretching, just a little bit pull. And then you do the same thing. You bring the foot to the outside and to the inside. To the outside and to the inside. This is a rotation of your upper leg. It's a rotation outwards, a rotation inwards, a rotation outwards, a rotation inwards. So you play with your upper bone, with your upper leg. Rotation of the upper leg inwards and outwards. Yeah, and you hold your foot. So if you do this, you can pull your heel closer to your buttocks. If this strains on your upper leg, you can try to lift your knee from the floor like this. It's not a stretch, it's an active lifting. You lift your knee from the floor. You can hold your foot and try to lift your knee from the floor. Uh, a couple of times. If it hurts today, don't do it. Just do it very, very gentle, just a tiny little bit. Maybe there's no, no movement at all, and then you can do the same thing tomorrow or in the evening again, and then it will be more easy. The body will adjust to your ideas and to your thinking, but you need to give it a little bit of time, and you have to practice. So, left foot, left hand, and then you can switch over right hand, left foot, and again, move the foot to the inside and to the outside, so that the upper leg is rolling, and then you will be able to touch, at some point, the foot to your buttocks. Might give it a little bit time. It's not stretching, it's just movement. Very easy. <laughs> it becomes a lot, a lot larger for me already. Yeah? And then you can do the other foot. Right hand, right foot, a little bit to the outside, to the inside. Yeah? Until you get, you get used to this movement. That's the thing. The body has to get used to this movement. You can, if you want, you can use a roller and put the roller onto your lower belly. So your ass is a little bit elevated. And with the elevated ass uh, behind, it's easier to grab the foot. It's easier to do this movement. So you can practice this a little bit. And then, when this is easy and you can touch your buttocks with your heel, you can remove the roller and try it without roller. And it will be even more easier. <laughs> it, it becomes very soft. Then, of course, there's my Japanese sitting video. It's an entire movement sequence where you, you kneel, you kneel on your knees fairly far apart and you have your toes together, and you sit back slowly, and then come forwards. And you arch in your back, and you look up. You can do the video. So this is another thing you can play with, or you can have your feet on top of each other when you come back. And, you feet, and when you sit back, the heel goes to the outside. Yeah? Bring the heel to the outside when you sit back. And when you come up, you bring the heels to the inside. You bring the heels together. And when you sit, the more you sit back, the more you bring the heels to the outside. As is if you make a little nest with your, with your feet. You make a nest, but you don't put eggs in the nest. You put your buttocks in the nest. You put your behind in the nest, yeah? And you can really, it doesn't matter when you have your knees very far apart, very manly. It's very manly sitting, yeah? Doesn't matter. Important is, even now I have the rotation. The knees have to rotate. And then you can come back to the original movement. Just practice this for a while, and it, it gets, it will be better and better, and easier and easier. 
until it's really easy for you to sit and to put your toes under your behind or your, your feet on top of each other and just sit down in Japanese sitting. And when once this is easy, the broad one, this will be easy as well. And this should also, for this mo um, position it's the same. There needs to be the rotation in the lower leg and if you have the, uh, in, the, in the knee. And if you don't have the rotation, that's not how the knee works. You need to appreciate how the knee works the many, the many ways it can move. Also, there's a connection with the feet. If the feet are too stiff, you have to roll your feet a little bit. So the feet can roll and your lower leg can roll. So the, the sole of the feet is looking towards the ceiling. And then it will be easier to sit like this. And the more you practice, the easier it will be. And never stretch and never strain. It's not a workout, but you try to bring your ideas into the body, into yourself. So thank you again for asking, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.